Hey guys, there's a new series on YouTube called What's in My Fridge that goes inside the kitchens, pantries, and fridges of some of the top YouTubers. Hey guys, Cassie here from Vlogilates. Hey, I'm Greg Benson of Mediocre Films. Brussels sprout stalks are in season. Cinnamon swirl bread makes the greatest French toast ever. It's on Upwave, and each episode will show you something you never knew about YouTube favorites like Michael Buckley and it's Judy time. Let's take a look at what's in my fridge. I got some turkey and chorizo chili I made last night. There's stocks, coconut milk. I got pluots, because those are the best fruits. And lettuce and green onions. Nito's homemade juice. Good stuff, good stuff. Not the candy and bacon you were probably expecting. Click down here to learn more about your favorite YouTube personalities and living on the up. And don't forget to subscribe. This is the 2014 Porsche Panamera, and I've come a thousand miles to Oregon to drive it. And if you're like me, you're looking at the new Panamera going, that looks just like the old Panamera. And I agree, it totally does, until you start looking close. They gave it new front and rear bumpers, headlights, taillights, side skirts, and they've changed the angle of the rear window a bit, so now you can see even less than before. Good thing they've also given it an overhead view backup camera, which is always a great option. There are a bunch of new engine choices as well. There's a twin turbo V6 which replaces the V8 and the S model. The GTS keeps the V8 but gets a bit more power. And there's a plug-in hybrid that can go 20 miles on pure electric. And then when the battery dies, the gas engine comes on and it can charge itself. And then there's the turbo, which gets a few more horsepower, a few more gadgets, and as usual, in press trim, carries a price tag bigger than its uh, hindquarters. The base price of the Panamera Turbo is $141,300, but as you can expect, my tester isn't exactly base. Shall we? Carmine Red, leather interior in black, retractable luggage compartment roller cover, thermal and noise insulated glass, electric roll-up sun blinds for rear compartment and side windows, sport design steering wheel, adaptive sports seats, carbon fiber interior, exterior packaging, high gloss black, Porsche Car Connect voice control system, telephone module, park assist with surround view, interior lighting package, LED headlights, Porsche dynamic light system, seat ventilation, front and rear, lane departure warning, ceramic brakes, rear wiper, 20 inch Panamera sport wheel in black, adaptive air suspension including PASM and PDCC, steering wheel heating, adaptive sport seats, sport package, premium package plus, Burmeister audio package, door sill guards and brushed aluminum, preparation door sill guards aluminum, key case in leather, vehicle key painted, LED interior lighting package, destination charge and taxes brings the total to $194,685. And if you are bad at math, let me tell you, there is a boxster worth of options in that Panamera Turbo. Damn. Now before you start going crazy about what Porsche charges for some of these options, remember that they are just that, they're options. Rather than becoming angry about getting ripped off, just take a second to think about the ways that you can make a Panamera your own. The odds are you'll never see another one like it. The order guide for this thing is literally 40 pages long, and you can get as much or as little as you want. As usual, the best value is to buy the biggest engine available and nothing else. When you're looking at a Porsche, you can look at the pricing and see, well, a, a Carrera is really expensive, but the Turbo is actually kind of a good value. Same thing with the Panamera. The V6 model is like 80 grand, so you're like, well, that's crazy, but the Turbo model is 140, and the performance for dollars seems to balance out. That's because all that chassis work, all that research, all that R&D is put into the base model. And as they go up in engines and power and options and stuff like that, they only have to improve it incrementally. They don't have to re-engineer the whole thing from scratch. That's why the higher up the food chain you go, the better the value you're getting in terms of Porsches. Enough about money, let's talk about how it drives. There are nine versions of the Panamera and they are base, Base 4, S, S4, Turbo, GTS, E-Hybrid, Diesel, and then Executive. 
nine. So you can really have it your way, just like a Whopper. And even though we're in the turbo right now, in the last two days, I have driven basically all of them, except the diesel, which we don't get in the US. And let me tell you, the new twin turbo V6 in the S is fantastic. It's a great replacement for the eight, feels really punchy, and it'll be magnificent once it's got a tune on it. The GTS, which still uses the V8, feels the most like a race car. It's very direct, you get instant torque, instant power, makes a crazy sound, all right? The hybrid, not my favorite, and I'll tell you why. Even though they put a ton of research into it, even though it works as advertised, and it's the only car that actually charges itself, the $100,000 hybrid market is limited to honestly one car. And it's not even a hybrid, I'm just talking about the Tesla. If you're gonna spend 100 grand on a green car, you want everyone to know you've got a green car, and the Panamera Hybrid looks just like the regular Panamera, not telling anyone that you've just spent that much money on a hybrid. And the executive is just ridiculous. They add six inches of room in the back, all kinds of consoles and options, and the one I drove yesterday was $220,000. If you must have a chauffeur-driven sedan, that is the fastest chauffeur-driven sedan that money can buy. And it's cheaper than a Bentley, so I guess there's that. But I have chosen the turbo model. Why? Because it's the fastest. That's all, it's, it's the fastest, it's still the fastest. In fact, of the new models of Panamera, it's the least interesting because it's the least changed. It's only, it's only got 20 more horsepower. It's got a few new features, but everything else kind of the same. But they were like, which one do you want to review? And I was like, the turbo, because it's the fastest. They have added sport exhaust. Oh, yes. Even though it's probably fake, even though they probably dump fuel into the cats to get it to do that. It's delicious. And of course, 520 horsepower still goes like a mother. Yes. It takes exactly one shift to remind you why PDK is the best transmission in the world. PDK is awesome. It just gets better and better every generation, faster, smoother. I have a fleet of Italian sports cars in my warehouse in LA right now at Gotham Dream Cars, and this sedan shifts faster than all of them. And from what I've learned about PDK's launch control, it is the best launch control in the business. I don't wanna say who told me, but a certain someone told me that PDK is designed for 3,000 launches. So what do you say we make it 2,999. Traction control is off. Sport Plus is engaged. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the gas. Spools up and then you go. <laughs> you have to do it in auto because it shifts out of first faster than you could do it. <laughs> oh, and that is miles an hour right there. Crazy. I love it. Here's the thing though, even though under here is the best gearbox in the world, or, or maybe it's in the back, I don't, wherever it is, it doesn't matter, you need to get the sport steering wheel because the sport steering wheel comes with normal paddles, right up, left, down. The standard steering wheel has those horrible push-pull things that are almost certain to guarantee that you end up in the wrong gear every single time. And I have a bit of a bone to pick with Porsche because their gear lever here is backwards. It's a Porsche. The race cars that they build are pull to shift up and push to shift down. How come this car isn't? I will never understand. So basically what I'm saying is you must spend $500 on the proper steering wheel in order to make best gearbox in the world less infuriating. You get a choice of two kinds of brakes, the regular steel ones or for nine grand, massive supercar grade ceramics. This one has a ceramics, but if I'm honest, you don't really need them. I mean, if you go to the track with your Panamera, which happens, like maybe, I don't know, maybe you need them. And if you habitually text and drive and those 20 milliseconds of stopping power are in between you and an involuntary manslaughter charge, okay, get the ceramics. Otherwise, the steel ones have better feel. They fade if you push them really hard, but around town they're less grabby, less squeaky, and they don't cost 9,000 bucks. You know, 
the thing is, the Panamera Turbo isn't for everybody. It is a, literally a supercar and a daily driver in one. I mean, the all-wheel drive system, the twin turbo engine, the transmission, the brakes, the tires, the suspension, that's all supercar grade stuff. And when you buy one of these, you're buying the supercar and the daily driver, and you're paying for them both. A lot of people would say, well, I could just have a five series daily driver and have a Porsche for the weekend. You could do that, but not everybody wants seven cars. Not everybody's me. Some people do want the one car that does everything. And this car does it all. Look, four people, total luxury, cross country, no problem. Or 748 around the Nürburgring, zero to 60 and three seven, quarter mile and 12 flat, 190 mile an hour top speed, supercar stuff. And you can do all that in a car that weighs as much as a Nissan GTR with a Lotus 7 strapped to the roof. It, it defies physics, it defies your perceptions of what is possible in a sedan, and that comes at a price. Such is life. The Porsche purists might disagree with me, but I've always thought the Panamera works well with the brand. It works as a family hauler, it works as an executive saloon car, and it works as a sporty sedan. But most importantly, from the driver's seat of the 2014 Panamera Turbo, it works perfectly as a Porsche. I like having one of the world's best all-wheel drive systems because it seems to rain about every nine seconds here. You never know what Oregon's gonna throw at you. Oh, squirrel, yes. That wasn't a yes for murder, that was a yes for survival. Say, <laughs> you gotta be careful with the, what That you was say. a yes for no no murder. No no squirrel aside today. Squirrel aside. Squirrel aside. Alright. Anything else you want to say in car? Not really.